Hi, I'm Angela Martin and welcome to another episode of Digicast. Now in this episode, we'll be looking at how we can use our tables and charts as well as our shapes within a Keynote presentation. Now, an essential part of Keynote is that we have the ability to combine complex data sets into one single slide with the use of a table or a chart. Now, to demonstrate this, I'll go back into my DigiK presentation. And within my presentation, I'll use my annual turnover, which has my annual turnover for 2013 and 2014, which I will now combine into one single slide with the use of a table and a chart. Now, first starting off with my table, I'll first add in a new slide. And the slide that I'll be using will be the slide with the title at the top. And I'll make my title annual turnover for 2013 to 2014. And I'll insert my years into a text box and I'll make it 2013-2014 and I'll drag my year just below my annual turnover title. So now that I have to insert my table, when I click on my table button, it will give me the various styles that I can use for my table. And the styles are the ones with a column header and a row header just a row header, no column or row header, column header and row header, as well as a total footer. And I'll see that there are arrows that will give me the option to add in the different colors for the table. So for now, I'll choose the table with a column header and a column row, which will then insert that table into my slide. So when I insert my table into my slide, it also gives me the ability to add in additional rows and columns. Now the button at the bottom will allow me to add in rows by clicking on the top arrow, as well as to delete rows to click on the bottom arrow. Also in the top right hand corner will allow me to add in columns as well as to delete columns. The button in the top left hand corner allows me to click and drag it into any position on my slide. And when selecting the table, I'll notice that there are three handles that appears with the table. And this allows me to change the size of my table. So if I click on any of the handles, say the handle on the side of the table, I can extend the column size of the table, as well as the handle at the bottom will allow me to extend the row. The corner will give me the option to extend the height and the width of my table. So now that we have the basic orientation of our table, we can now insert our data. Now, if I look at my slide, I'll see that I've got the two different years, which is 2013 and 14, as well as my different departments. So I'll make three columns, two for my years, and one for my department. I can go back to my table and change my column amount to only three columns. And now I can insert my column headers. And now that I have all my column headers, now I can insert my various departments. So now if I look at my two slides again, I see that there are four departments. So I will have five rows, which is one for my header, as well as my four for my different departments. So I can go ahead and insert my departments. So now that I have all my departments in place, I can now start adding in my figures. I can see that my data is not in the correct format as I want it in. So now if I want to have it in the correct format, I first select my cells. So I'll click on my first cell. I'll hold down my shift key and I'll click on the last cell and this will select all of the cells in between. And now I can go into my cell tab button under my format inspector and I can change my cell data format to currency. Now after putting in my currency format, I still see that it appears to be a lot of zeros in my figures. So now I can start changing my format into a more readable format. So yeah, I've got the different options. I can change my accounting style and you'll see that the RAND sign will go to the left hand side within my cell, but that is not what I want. So I'll undo the accounting style. 
However, I want to set it in a format which is more readable. So now I can go into my data format again, and I'll see that there is no format option for me. So I have to then set up my own, which will take me into the create custom format option. So yeah, I can set up my own format in terms of how my data within my cells will be presented. So now, first of all, this is showing me how my current data is showing. So now I'll put in a currency by dragging the R into the my custom format bar and now see that it's now added in my currency. If I do want to change the currency, I can click on the arrow on the currency box and it gives me the different currency options. Now, also I want to do a scale so I can click on the scale symbol, which is now currently shown as K and I can drag it into my custom format bar. Now, after I put it in my custom format bar, I can click on the downwards arrow once again, and I can now change my scale format, which is in thousands to millions, which is now presented with the M. So now it shows me my custom format will be shown as millions instead of all of the zeros. So if I click on OK, I'll see that the format is now more readable and showing me that all of my figures is now all into the million range. I can see that my format is now in place. And now the only thing that is different from my table is the color of my table. So if I want to set up a color for the table, I can click on the table to select it first. And now under my cell tab button, once again in my format inspector, I can now change the color by clicking on the color box, which will then show me the color swatches. And I can now click on any of the color swatches to change it to a different color. However, if the color that you want to insert into your table is not within the swatches, you can always select the color wheel and you can then take the crosshair within the color wheel and drag it to any position within the color. For now, I will just undo it to go back to my standard color. In my case, I want to change the color of my column header as well as my row header. So first of all, I click on the letter above my column to select my entire column. And I will now change the color to the color of my company. The easiest way to do this is if I now go into my color grabber. And then I'll move my color grabber to my footer of my slide, which contains the color of my company. I could also do it under my company logo, either or. So I will move it to the darker side of my footer, which will then change it to that color. Now the same I want to do with my row header. I'll click on the number next to my row header, and I will now do the same. Click on my color grabber, but more to the lighter side of my footer and that will now insert that color into my row header. So now that I've selected my color, I have format that I want as well as the color for my table. Now that I have my table, I can do the same with my chart. So now to add in my chart, I'll go to adding it into a new slide. So I'll go to add new slide and I'll select the same slide as I had in my previous one, the one with the title at the top. And I'll also call this my annual turnover for 2013 and 14. So now that I've got my titles all in order, I can now add in my chart by clicking on my chart button, which once again, bring me the different options for my chart. And I can select a 2D, 3D or an interactive version for my chart. So first start off with a conventional 2D option and I'll select the 2D bar chart. And I can now insert my data for my bar chart by clicking on the edit chart data. Now after clicking on the edit chart data, it will bring about a new window with a table in it, which represents the data of the chart. So I'll first put in my headers, which is my years as well as my departments. Now that I've got my columns as well as my header rows in place, I can now start adding in my data. So now that I've put in my data, I can see that my data is now reflecting on my chart. So now if I want to make further adjustments onto my chart, I can click on my chart 
and I'll see that on my format inspector under my chart tab button I can change the chart style I can change the font of the chart I can also change the chart type now if I want to change it say into a 3d column chart it will then change it into a 3d column chart which allows me to change my position of my chart to give it a more 3d effect also, I would notice that my chart style is a bit different from the 2D one. So if I click on my wooden style, which will then change my charts into wooden blocks. Besides the 3D chart style, I can also change it into an interactive chart, which gives me the ability to change the chart in real time on the slide while presenting. So these are my chart types as well as how I can customize it even further. So now that I've got my annual turnover onto a table and a chart, I can see that the standard slides on my turnover I don't require anymore. So I can select both by holding down the command key and I can then delete those two. Now when it comes to shapes, shapes is quite handy if you want to put some emphasis on a certain object within your slide or even if you want to point out what is going to happen next. So just to demonstrate it quickly, I'll click on my shapes button and within my shapes button as I can see it gives me the different shapes that I can insert. Also the arrows will make it possible to select a different color for my shape. So for now, I'll just start off with adding in a blue square, which will then add it into my slide and say I want to now emphasize on the fact that this figure for 2014 is my highest out of all the departments. So I can put that square just above my table. I can double click to start editing it and I'll just type in highest turnover shape a little bit more bigger and I'll add in an arrow as well to indicate which one that I'm looking at. So if I click on shapes again, I can go to my style that looks more like a crayon drawing and I can reposition that arrow by clicking at the handle, dragging it downwards and just putting it below my square and I'll just make it shorter by clicking on the handle and, and just drag it upwards and now I've got my shape pointing down but now I can see the color isn't in line with the color of my slide so what I'll do is I'll click on first of all my square shape go into my style and within my style I can now click on any of the styles above or I can just change the color fill so I'll click on the color fill select the swatches if I want to but if I want to use the color wheel, I can also do it by clicking on the color wheel. And there's my color grabber once again. And I can then select any of the colors. Nice and green, maybe just make it a bit darker. There we go. And now I've got a better color for my shape. The same I can do for my arrow as well. So I'll click on my arrow. And after clicking on my arrow, I can then click again onto the swatches. I'll use the swatches this time, so I'll select a green, much more darker green color for my swatch, and there I see they have got it in place. Also, if I now want to show which slide is coming up next, I can do that by adding in another shape. This time I'll add in the arrow, drag it to the side, a little bit smaller, and I can once again change the color of it, and I'll select a darker green once again and I can specify that this will be charts and there we go so that is how I can add in my shapes now to delete my shapes or any of my objects that I've just inserted I can click on any of the shapes and just press the backspace which will then take out those shapes so that is how I can insert and customize my tables charts as well as my shapes. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Digicast with me, Angela Martin. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day and goodbye.